long one. Nice. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Bottom of the Stream movie show. My name is Adam. My name is Nick. Welcome to the world famous Bottom of the Stream podcast. We're here to talk about a movie. We are. As we, we are. <laughs> As we are. Every week. Yep. This is what we do on a Thursday. Sure is. Providing I remember to put the episodes out. Best time of the week. Absolutely. Is watching the movie the best time or talking about the movie the best time? Or does that completely depend on the movie? Talking about the movie. Even if it's a great movie, talking about it is better than watching it. Yes, because it's still good. It's I have a great time talking about a good movie and... A better time talking about a bad movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fair. That's, I think that's fair. So this week we are watching a movie called Before I Wake. It's from 2016. It is a 15. It runs for one hour and 37 minutes. Currently rated at 6.2 out of 10 on IMDb and is a Netflix original. 6.2. We've definitely been in a zone the last just, few weeks. Just lately, the mid fives to mid sixes. Yeah. yeah. Personally, so the, I think the last three weeks have been 5.6, 5.9, 6.2. Correct. And I think they've been very... I would certainly not have them close. No, I'd agree with that. For many different reasons. Hmm. Same. I'd agree. I'd, and yeah, well, we'll, we'll see there. if we'll have them in the same order <laughs> as IMDb does. Uh, <laughs> it's quite a high rating. Do you think? No, no, no. It's quite a high rating for what we use. Oh, for a bottom get. of the stream yes. movie. Yes, I'd agree with that. It is. Uh, it's billed as a Netflix original. It wasn't made by Netflix. It was purchased by Netflix. It had been in the sh- on the shelf for quite a long time before this. I believe nearly four years. Yeah, which is crazy when your main character is only four eight years old yeah. <laughs> so yeah it, it stayed on the shelf for a long time before uh, before netflix picked it up and branded it themselves and did, did you read a bit about there. that not really i i couldn't find a lot about it if i'm honest okay did you? so uh, just I a little bit you would have <laughs> I, didn't... I am going from memory though okay i've not fine. made notes on this the history of it. um so before i wake is by mike flanagan yep uh this was released after hush yes and was... gerald's game yeah on Netflix. Straight after Hush. But it was made well before them. Yeah. The end of 2013, this was filmed. Which must have been roughly around the same sort of time that Room was being made. With Jacob Tremblay also in I, I think he, he Jacob looked, Tremblay filmed this before Room. Well, okay. Because he looks about the same kind of age in there. So there can't be a lot in it. And, and it was basically, yeah, four years later, that this actually made it out onto Netflix. That's crazy. Because the production company went bust and it sat on the shelf madness um, but it happens I so guess. i think it's flanagan's second film that he made but the fourth film fourth or fifth. no fourth or fifth film of his to be I think released ouija was first oculus then oculus hush gerald's game hush gerald's game then no gerald's game and then hush Ooh, yeah and then this yeah okay and then dr sleep and then nothing since film wise well yeah but he makes <laughs> he's making a lot of, of tv series. but he hasn't made a film since start to sleep um, this film stars a lady called Kate Bosworth. She plays a character called Jessie. Uh, she's appeared on the show before, but she's never been in a film that we've done before. No. She was in a TV show called The Island, which has she come was. up a lot just lately. Uh, it was she li- was great in it, wasn't she? No. <laughs> <laughs> she was fucking terrible in it. Remember that like sex scene where she had to eat a oh, burger? God. Yes. <laughs> That's not a euphemism. <laughs> I actually ate a cheeseburger. The Island is without a doubt the worst TV show I've ever watched all the way through. Yeah. And Kate Bosworth Everyone's is one terrible of the worst in people. it. Yeah. But Kate she's Bosworth really, is really, bad, really in bad in it. But she's not in this. And she's not a bad actress. No, I've seen her in other stuff and she's been fine. I've seen her in Superman Returns where yeah. she played Lois Lane. Yeah. That's the only other thing I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> also stars a guy called Thomas Jane. He plays Mark. Um, most famous probably he was in The Mist. Uh, he was in Deep Blue Sea. He was the Punisher. He was the Punisher for a little while. He's also very recently been on this show he has he was in anti-life a few weeks ago yeah we is this was. the quickest return we've ever had for an actor i think it is quite a quick turnaround it is what's four weeks three weeks five weeks <laughs> something like uh, that. an amount of weeks i think an extra credit in this movie should go to thomas jane's hair what is going on with thomas jane's hair in this movie it's horrendous <laughs> yeah it's really it's, bad it's quite the it's, it's kind of got a bit of like rod stewart going on it's a really it? bad wig it's a terrible wig. <laughs> and finally, this film stars a kid who we've just mentioned previously is called Jacob Tremblay. He plays a character called Cody, most famous for with the aforementioned Room. Um, he was also in Wonder. Um, he has a brief, like, a brief scene in Doctor Sleep where he completely steals the film. And he played Luca in Luca. Yeah, he's the voice of Luca. What's the, what's the one with the sweary kids? Good boys. Yeah, yeah, he's really good in that as well. So he's kind of grown up on screen 
and I've pretty much seen everything he's done, I think. I don't know why. Okay. But I think when you look at Room, Wonder, and then this all came within two years, that's a pretty good run for a child it, actor. It's very good. Probably one of the best child actor runs you'll have seen recently. Shall I start on a positive? I, I, yes. I feel like we're going to have a lot of fun with this episode. I think he's really good in this movie. The kid? Uh, yeah, do you yeah, know he is, why? Is. Because a lot, I think a lot of the time, when people say... That kid was really good in that movie. Yeah. It's because they're playing like some kind of like smart aleck. Yeah. Intelligent, quippy kid who, yeah, you know, trades barbs with adults and stuff. Yeah. In this movie, he is just a kid. He's just playing a kid. Oh, shit. It's not my mic. Sorry. And now it sounds really obvious. Yeah. But he's just a kid. And he did the who's same. scared. And he does it really well. And he did exactly the same thing in Room, and he did exactly the same thing in Wonder. Yeah. And all three of them are really good. Or well, the performances are all really good. Yeah. There was a, there was a school of thought that thought he was going to get an Oscar nomination for Room. Yes. And he was sick. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> it is probably a travesty that he didn't, because it's it's brilliant. But now he he just makes animated films at the minute because he's a gangly teenager, <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't want to be on screen. I imagine. But yeah, he's doing a lot of voice work for Pixar and DreamWorks and all that sort sure. of thing just lately. As I said, he made, he played Luca recently in Luca. Uh, written and directed by a guy called Mike Flanagan. Mike Flanagan has appeared on this show before and has won season two of this show with Hush. Yeah. We both raved about Hush. Hush yeah, is a great movie. Hush is a great movie. It really is a great movie. Um, he wrote it alongside his writing partner, Jeff Howard, who pretty much writes everything with him. You, you'd know Mike Flanagan if you've seen anything on Netflix just lately. Yeah. Haunting of Hill House, Haunting of Bly Manor, Midnight Mass, Gerald's Game. They're all on there. Yeah. They're pretty much his whole cast. Apart from Oculus and Ouija, all of his work is on Netflix pretty much. Yes. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, I think I think Doctor Sleep's on like Amazon. Oh, of course. Yeah. I always but... forget Doctor Sleep and I really love Doctor Sleep. Yeah. It's great. I work with a girl who loves Doctor Sleep so much she watches it almost every week. Really? I find that really strange. Would you love any movie to watch it every week? No. She comes in most weeks. She's like, oh, I watched Doctor Sleep again at the weekend. I'm like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> why not just watch The Shining at some point has <laughs> she read the book she's like, I've never seen The Shining no she's not yeah she has read the book she's a big Stephen King fan okay. we talk about Stephen King quite a lot but yeah it's just like oh, it's nice to have friends <laughs> it's nice <not his> colleagues <laughs> <laughs> okay fine. <laughs> fine do you have a one word review of Before I Wake Butterflies oh is that it yeah. <laughs> you said that as if there's going to be more to it Butterflies and you stopped yeah, you know me one word reviews Yep. Nail on head. All on. Did this freak you out? Yes. I wouldn't want to live in this house and then watch <laughs> that movie about butterflies turning up. It made me think that maybe somebody was telling me to watch this movie. You may yes. have to explain that because I don't know how much we've referenced the. It happened live on the show once. Remember? Yeah, but I, I, I but think it, it, we it, went into a lot of detail on it with the burrito boys did, in one yeah. of our Christmas episodes, or it might have been a bonus episode. It so. was a Christmas episode, I think. So for the last two winters now, my house has been. Not taken over by butterflies, but <laughs> occasionally a random butterfly will just appear in the winter, like yeah, November, inside. December, inside, in a room like this, like we're in now. In fact, one appeared in here not long ago. And this film's all about creepy butterflies. <laughs> it did freak me out a little bit. I thought, I, I was hoping it would. It did. I suppose we'll get into this more at the end. Mike Flanagan doesn't like this being called a horror film. Okay. Which I think is fair. I don't think it is a horror film. There's, there's scary scenes in it, it and there are jump scenes in yes, it, but there it's are. not a horror film. And th there is a, in inverted commas, monster. Yes. This movie reminded me of a hell of a lot of a movie we watched a couple of seasons ago. Okay. Um, Called? We'll get to that. Oh, okay. We'll do that then. It, it reminds me of another movie as well, which I want to talk about. Oh, I wonder if it's the same one. one. It's not one that we've done. Oh, okay. So it's no. not then. <laughs> it's not. Um, where does this film start, Nick? This movie... It starts with a boy. It does. He's asleep in his bed. Seems to be having a, a peaceful rest. It does. He seems very contented and asleep. Young boy. Enter man. <laughs> into the room. Yes. <laughs> Not into the boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you go there? Sorry. Enter man to the room. Yeah. Uh, he's a bit sweaty and cryy. Yeah, he's a, he looks a bit upset, doesn't he? And he's brandishing a weapon. He has a gun. Yeah. Not good. He looks like he's going to shoot this boy. Yeah. And then there's like loads of uh, what I have only described as ghost noises. Yeah. And he gets hit by a door at yeah. one point, which I thought was really funny. So yeah, he's about to shoot this kid. Um, he actually does pull the trigger, but the door hits him and so he shoots him off at a ghost. Yeah. Possibly. Yep. 
And then we go straight from there into a title card. Well, the kid wakes up. Yeah. And then, yeah, titles. And then straight to the title card. Um, and then we cut straight to, um, I've called it an adoption meeting, but yes. I guess it's a fostering meeting. That's right. So these two people are trying to foster a child. And the lady who's in charge of this, his name I haven't got, but... Doctor. Doctor. <laughs> She's in charge She's of the She's a child support lady. Yeah, I haven't got her name. Um, and she decides that Cody would be a good fit for this couple. Um, something's happened to... We don't know at this point what it is, but something's happened to this couple in the past and they need a kid. I think she said they'd found him having lived alone for a month. Yeah, he'd lived alone for a month, um, but he'd managed to survive and look after himself for yeah. a month. Um, he has. He's a normal kid. He's happy. Nice. She even says she actually likes this kid, which he's not allowed yeah. to do. Um, but he does have a bit of trouble with sleeping. But she thinks they'll be... It, He'll be a good fit for their household. Yes, she says something like, you know, in a safe environment, this, the yeah. kid might thrive. He's been abandoned more than once by families in the past and he needs a safe family environment. Um, then they go home, they pull up to their enormous house, which is fast becoming a trope on this show again. Uh, all, all people have. In, in fact, I was, when we watched The Adam Project earlier this week, yeah. exactly the same conversation I had with my wife. Yeah. Every movie house is huge Massive. and amazing, even... You don't have a job. Yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, the cu- the couple clearly. we haven't mentioned are Thomas Jane and Kate Bosworth. Yes, sorry. We should mention that. They play Jesse and Mark, respectively. Uh, when they he, get home... He's Mark, she's Jesse, just in case you weren't sure. Thanks. <laughs> but Jesse can work either way. Yeah, but Mark can't. You don't have many female <laughs> Marks. I don't <laughs> care what you say. <laughs> there might be one. I was going to try and defend it, but no, I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> When they get home, they start taking pictures down in their house. They've got a few pictures up on the wall. Um, they start taking them down. Their pictures show a child yeah. with them in the picture. So it appears that they have had a child before. That child is no longer here. Yeah. And we find out now why. Because she goes to a... Jessie goes to a grief counselling group session. Um, where she's talking about the loss of a child that she's had in the past. That's right. And Mark stopped coming to the session. Yeah, he won't go. He's got his own way of grieving. Oh, yeah. um, she's suffering from terrible insomnia. This is where the counsellor tells her what insomnia means. And it, insomnia means dreams. Insomnia means no dreams. Yeah. Insomnia was the working title for this film. Much and it's a better title. title for this film. Um, and she says Mark's dealing with it differently. Um, it's basically, it's a bit of exposition to tell you why sure. they're trying to adopt. Why we are where we are. Why we are where we are, this is how we start the film. Um, that night, she can't sleep, so she goes for a bit of a walk around her mansion. Um, she appears to have some trauma with the bathtub. Yeah, she just stares at the bath. She just stares at the bathtub, and then we get a brief glimpse of a kid drowning. Um, so we figured that's probably what happened to their son, who was Yeah, because as they're like getting the house ready, taking the photos down, don't we? We see Mark briefly putting like a... or I don't know if he's putting it in or he's checking like the hand... Handle, handle, hand hold, hand, hand grips in the bath. Yeah, around the top of the bath. Yeah, yeah. It appears it doesn't really ever explain how the kid drowned in the bath, but it, their their previous son died by drowning in the yeah. bath. Um, the next day, Cody arrives. Um, he turns up with this um, adoption lady, fostering lady, and he is a very polite child. He turn, he, he calls them Mister and Missus, whatever their surname was. Yeah. Holds out his hand for a handshake from Mark. This kid's like five or six in this. I also think it's never referenced what Mark does for a job. No. To have this massive house. No, it isn't. Uh, but I think he might work for Microsoft because he basically goes to Cody. Look, I've got. do you want to come and have a go on my Xbox? I've got the Kinect. It does this, this, <laughs> this. It does, this, and he it does a whole advert for the, uh, yeah. the Microsoft Kinect. He does. <laughs> but then he did say to him, I can buy a Wii if you want a Wii. Yeah. So the dates the film slightly, but... Uh, that's what was going on. We well, literally listed the connect feature. It is, yeah. I thought it was really weird. It looks it just like he was out. reading the box. Oh, yeah. They show Cody to his room. He loves his room, even though it's not really been decorated. They've told him he's he just can... happy to have a space. He's that happy to have a room. It's got butterfly curtains. Yeah. And he loves butterflies. He's got a real thing for butterflies, Cody. Has. Yeah. Um, the adoption lady explains that he collects butterflies. He's well into butterflies. It's his thing. That's what he does. They put him to bed, and the next day he gets up and he has to go to school. He's got oh, to start. Not quite. Thing. Okay. <laughs> They put him to bed, yeah. set, settle him down, yeah. and he whips his box out. <laughs> yes, okay. Like he's got this trunk. Yeah, it's like a little 
cardboard under box there. that he keeps his stuff in. And so he doesn't. It's sort got it. it's got a book about butterflies. Yeah. So he's like, you know, like his do, he's reading it under the sheets. Yeah, yeah he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't sleep. He doesn't want to ever sleep. Well, and but therein is no in the box is also filled with like Red Bull, <laughs> Coke, Red Bull, and caffeine pills. Caffeine pills. And he's he's just sitting there drinking these sodas, looking at his butterfly box. Yeah. So at this point, we don't know why Cody doesn't like to sleep, but we have been told in the past that he doesn't. If he gets to the next day, he has to go to school. Goes to school. He never seems that tired. To be fair to him, he doesn't. Maybe if you get used to it. Yeah. That's all the caffeine he's taking. So he goes to school, he comes home from school and he takes a bath. Um, Jesse is very nervous about him being in the bath on his own. She stands listening at the door to make sure she can hear him the whole time. Yeah. But and Mark says to her, look, you need to just calm down. Let him have It'll a bath. be fine. Let him have a bath. Um, they put him to bed again. Uh, a lot of this film is Cody being put to bed. Jesse finds his box. Yeah. And he starts talking about, oh, Jesse finds his box and takes his stimulants, stimulants away. Cody starts teaching Mark how to learn about butterflies. Yeah. Going through his book. They're like, bonding aren't they over butterflies and he reveals at this point that he's scared of the canker man because he eats people this is cody's monster this yeah is he says i don't like to sleep no don't sleep because of the canker man and he eats people he said he's, yeah he says he ate my my mother yeah so that would be a good enough reason and that he's always with him sleep. yeah he would never leave him yeah yeah um later on as mark and jesse are watching the film in the house. The uh, did you know who's in, who was in the film? I did know. Well, I didn't know who was in the film. I did. It, and then it, it Ross was, Cook also pointed it out in, in the, the Discord. Discord. Vincent yeah. Price. It was Vincent Price. Twice in three weeks. Yeah. Again. So Thomas Jane and Vincent the, Price. It was the, the voice. Day. I think I'd looked away and I was like, I know that voice. <laughs> it was. I didn't notice it. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't I didn't pick it up. Um. So they're watching a film. It's an old black and white Vincent Price film on the TV. And suddenly some butterflies fly into the house. Yeah. Quite a lot, a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, all different colors and species. shapes and sizes and species and mark and jesse are both like flabbergasted by this it's, i mean it's weird it, it's very weird well it's not so weird for me <laughs> it happens all the time but the amount of them would be weird yeah, i would leave if that man <laughs> came in oh uh, yeah but it looks really pretty because they were all like they didn't look like real butterflies no they were how somebody would imagine a butterfly they were to like- look yes they were like a cross between a, a glow worm and a, you, you know yeah, they were like- Almost like animated butterflies, yeah. yeah. And Mark even catches one. In a, in a pint glass. In a pint glass. And he's got it in like a jar and he's looking at it. And then Jesse heads towards the door, Yeah. slams the door shut, and suddenly they all disappear. Oh, also, one bites her. Yeah, one. And that's never... I thought, oh, oh my God, she's going to turn into like a butterfly woman. Yeah, maybe it was because he was about to start... We're going further into the film here, but maybe he was about to start dreaming further yeah, in. Yeah, possibly. And she... Because her slamming the door woke him up. Yeah. And that makes all the butterflies vanish, which fr- completely throws Mark. He's like, what the hell was that? That was really weird. Because even the one in his jar disappears. There was a creepy shape in the doorway behind them. Did you spot that? No, not at this point. Okay. <laughs> it was quite creepy. Okay. And a shape. And a shape, a creepy shape. Yeah. Cool. In the doorway behind them. <laughs> <laughs> a Podcasting. Bit, <laughs> a bit later that night, um, Jesse's gone for another walk. Jesse doesn't sleep either. She's She's got insomnia. Um, she goes for a bit of a walk and it, it's the standard night time of doors are slamming around me doors are slamming around stuff. me it's dark I've not turned any lights on I don't know about you but if I go down to, in the middle of the night I always turn a light on yeah because I'd just fall down the stairs if I didn't yeah. but people in movies never do you don't want to like, piss on the floor do you? I don't want to piss on the floor there's only me that's going to clean that up <laughs> <laughs> a kid runs past her creepy very creepy. Just a shape. It's yes. not a we don't person. Know who it is it's a, it's, it's, it's a... clearly some someone small. Yeah, it's a small child. But it's kind of scuttling, a bit spider like, isn't it? Yeah. Is so she thinks it's Cody, obviously. So she goes up to his room, finds out that he's still asleep. She has no idea. Um, the next morning at group, she goes to this group counseling, grief counseling session again. Um, she reveals to them that she thinks it was Sean. Yeah, her dead kid. Yeah, she thinks it was Sorry, her kid who passed away. And she thinks he's angry that Cody's taken he's his jealous. place in the house. He's jealous. So that's why he's come back to haunt her now. And the doc says, quite reasonably, I think, look, I've not, it's not the first time I've heard of something like this. Yeah. You know, it could be a waking dream. It's normal for you to feel haunted, yeah. which I thought was quite a nice line. Yeah, it makes sense. All makes sense, doesn't it? Um, next day at school, Cody's drawing a picture of a butterfly because he's the butterfly guy. And and the girl and the girl who sits next to him is like, trying to make friends with him. She's trying yeah. to be friendly with him. She says, that's really pretty. And then she draws some antennae onto it. Correct. I don't know if you noticed, but before that in this film, none of the butterflies had antennae. Yeah. 
And then after that, they all did. Yeah, it was nice. Because that's uh, it's a nice little touch. Later on, a after... naughty boy gets sent to the back as well. Doesn't yeah, he? yeah. This is where we, we meet we'll... Tate for the yeah, first time. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So he's a bit. He's there's every school, every class in every school's yeah. got one, haven't they? Uh, later on at night, Cody is standing in the lounge of the house, looking at a family, f- the one family photo that they've allowed to stay yeah. with Sean in. And he reveals at this point that because they said to him, they tell him that Sean's dead. Yeah. They don't sugarcoat that at all for She her. says, oh, he's in heaven. And Cody says, that's where my mum is. Yeah, maybe. They, I think he says, oh, well, they're together or yes. they know each other or something And, Je- like and Jesse says to him, well, what, what, have, what do you know about your mum? And he's like, I don't, don't remember my mum at yeah. all. I don't remember her. Cody says that Sean looks fun, which yeah. is quite a big thing for the future of this film. But that's what he says, as if they'd be mates. Um, that night, Cody's in bed. The two adults are still up. The room gets filled with butterflies again. The butterflies are back. And then Mark notices that Sean is also there. Is this when they're Christmas butterflies? No, that's later. Oh, is that later on? Yeah, that's the next time. This is the point where he just stands there as if he's in the picture. right. Because that's all Sean's seen of him, uh, Cody's seen of him at this point. So he's wearing the same thing that he's wearing in the photo. Just with his cheesy posing for the camera (laughs) grin on. We should probably mention at this point that all all that's happening is in Cody's imagination. Yeah. His dreams dreams are manifested. His dreams are being manifested into real life. But because he hasn't seen or heard to Sean, he's only seen this picture. It's just an inanimate object, basically, yeah. that's standing in the room. So they both are amazed by this. They both hug him. They both touch him as if to say, is he real? Um, and then suddenly he wakes up and Sean vanishes. And Jesse falls over because he's yeah. hugging him. Which and down. then Cody comes downstairs. This might have been the funniest bit for me. It really got a laugh out of me. <laughs> right, okay. He comes downstairs and says, I'm sorry. Yeah. And then just pops open a can. He grabs a can of Coke. <laughs> Because he's scared him. He's like, he knows that he's upset them by doing that. Yeah. But he has no control over it. So he has to go and get a drink. It's just really well delivered it was, by the kid. By the yeah. The next morning again he apologizes. He apologizes for his dreams, and this is where it's revealed to us what's happening. And Jesse says to Mark, after Cody's gone, Jesse says to Mark, I wish we had heard his voice. But they're not I get that Cody can't explain what's happening in happening. He's only a little kid. Yeah. These two and I, I, I I can give it a little bit of leeway because they've been surprised by this sudden appearance of their their dead kid. Yeah. But they're not quick on the uptake here, are they? <laughs> no, not really. I mean... I yeah. think Jesse is more than Mark. I think Jesse kind of gets it from... But then this is... Mark calls it later. Yeah. That whatever's about to happen is a form of abuse. And yeah. at first I thought, well, that was a bit strong. But then having oh, seen the whole film and, what, and, and thought about it for, for a couple of days, I'm like... This is mental behaviour <laughs> for them to then sit him down and show him all these so, videos of their kid. Yeah, Jesse sits him down and she's like, do you want to learn more about Sean? Yeah. Because she wants to see Sean again. She wants to hear his voice again. So, so which so implies she, actually, no, they have worked out what's happening. Yeah, they know. She knows exactly what's happening. Kid. Yeah, she's... She, she knows exactly what's happening. Yeah, this is... This is and she bad. uses him to bring her own son back. And this is where their, their relationship starts to fall apart a little bit. Well, this this might end up being my my big issue with this movie. Okay, is where the, where this relationship is now, or where it ends up. Okay, between Jesse and Cody. We can have this discussion. I don't know if I'm buying it right, by okay. the end. Really? Let's, let's okay, interesting. Delve into that in a bit. <laughs> so basically, Jesse re- realizes that she can exploit Cody's gift. Yeah, and so she shows him a load of video footage of Sean at Christmas. Uh, when he was at his most happy, Cody reveals that he's never really had a Christmas, which is very sad. Um, and then she puts him to bed. She puts him to sleep. And she tries to stay awake because she, she's pretty sure she knows what's going to happen at this point. Yeah, because um, Mark's saying, oh, you know, come to bed. You yeah, because he's, well. I don't think at this point he's not figured it out. I think she gets Or it he's not figured it out or he's not. It's hard to tell, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's this point where And I've got issues, because I think where I'm coming from is I've got issues with both... Thomas Jane and Kate Bosworth's performance. Okay. I, just, I don't think they quite hit the nuances. And it's difficult for me to tell at this point with, with Thomas Jane's character, Mark. Is he stupid? <laughs> or is he further along the grieving process and he doesn't need I think it's a bit what of both. she's looking I th- for? I, I don't think whether Flanagan doesn't quite get it out of them or they've not quite got it. Maybe. I don't think he needed it as much as she did. Yeah. And because of that, she, he hadn't really given it. Do you understand it what I'm much saying? Much. Yes, I, don't, I don't think it's... Yeah, I do get that. It's quite there. I don't think he. I don't think Mark needed it as much as she did. So I don't think he'd fought, given it as much thought as she had. Yeah, and that's probably why he's a little bit. He gets it now at this yeah. point because as he turns around 
a Christmas tree appears and then Sean comes running down the stairs and it's basically a replay of what had happened on this DVD. But they get to re- relive that moment with this Sean. This looked beautiful, this did. Yeah, it did. Because the butterflies are, are they're basically Christmas, fairy lights fairy with lights wings. with wings, yeah. And it looks, it was really great. It was it's a, a really r- beautiful film. Lovely There's, there's a lot of really nice yeah. scenes in this. And she gets to have her Christmas with Sean again. She gets to do the Eskimo nose kiss and yeah. all that sort of stuff with him. This is the point I think where Mark gets it because he looks at Sean and he says Cody. Hmm. And then Cody wakes up. Because Sean's a bit waxy, isn't he? Yeah, he's like it a does, ki- it, how a kid would look. He looks like a video footage yeah. of a... It's how Sean... It's how Cody is imagining yeah. Sean to look, um, which is explained a little bit later on. And then just before Cody wakes up, a man made of butterflies enters his room. Yeah, so That's it's, it's a cloud of butterflies it. that form Forms into a into creature it. as it opens the door. Yeah. I'll give it another big positive here. I thought the creature design was awesome. Awesome. I would give you that. The canker man that looks really great. creepy. Yeah. Really, really. Especially at this point because, he, and there's one point later on where it's like proper creepy. Yeah. But he walks right into Cody's room. He walks right up into Cody's face while Cody's still asleep. And he says, I am always with you. Yeah. And that's what scares Cody the most. The fact that he knows that he can't get rid of this, yeah. this violent monster. Um, and he wakes up. And Jesse is left sitting on the floor alone downstairs because the Christmas tree and everything obviously vanishes. Um, and Mark takes her up to bed. Basically, he's like, come on, we're going to bed. We'll forget that ever happened. <laughs> Next day, Cody's back in school. He is now drawing a picture of this canker man in black crayon. And then when he's finished his picture of him, he scribbles him out. Yeah. And he explains to the girl who sits next to him, that's what keeps him away. Well, it he seems he to said help it helps. Him. helps. Him. Help he goes him. away for a few days or yeah. something like, like that. It seems to keep him yeah. away if I do that. Later on, whilst Sean's at school, um, I'm going to get Sean and Cody mixed up <laughs> all the way through. Jesse's put all the pictures of Sean back up on the wall that they took down earlier. Yeah. And this is the point where they have their argument about, because Mark says to her, I know what you're doing. This is wrong. Yeah. This feels like you're abusing this kid. You, See, you, he says you're using as a you're using him as a home movie projector. Yeah, which is exactly what she's doing. And it's the most sensible thing anyone said in this movie, and I think that goes back to my point of as as he just cottoned on and then worked it out quickly, or is he? <laughs> I, it just the I, It was just not quite there. I don't like, think he got it as quick as Jesse did, yeah. but I think he got it during that Christmas scene, and then he realized straight away what she was doing, yeah, and he calls her out on it. He completely yeah. calls her out on it. He's like, um, "This isn't okay." Basically, is what he says, and she and Jesse turns to Mark and she says, "I'm not going to let you take him away from me again." Right. So this frustrated me because I wanted more of this. Yeah. So I was like, "Okay, what's the real story here?" Yeah. I don't necessarily need to know. We never know how exactly how Sean dies, and, and I'm fine with that. Yeah. But Jesse clearly. What is I would Mark like, to, yeah. What I level. would like more of is to see that conflict through between the couple. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Because I think it would have given them more to go at. Because. She's on a sub sort of subconscious level. She's blaming Mark for whatever's yeah. happened here, and he, he again calls her out on that. He yeah, says, like, that's, that's not, not fair. fair. What are you talking about? Yeah, there was nothing to do with me. It wasn't my fault. Next day, it looks like it's show and tell day at school because Cody's heading to school with a butterfly in a jar that he's managed to capture from somehow, and this bully, horrible bully kid, smashes the jar on the floor. Yeah, kills the butterfly, and Cody gets up and pushes him down. Yeah, he does. And this is a kid who's much bigger than Cody is. Yeah. I mean, most people are bigger than Jacob Tremblay at this point in his life. He was a tiny little kid. That day during school, Cody is knackered. He's exhausted. Well, kind of. He, was, he says to his teacher, I don't want to go to recess. He doesn't want to go to recess because of the bullies, because outside. Of the bullies outside, but also because he's tired. Um, and she says to him, look, you look tired. You can stay in on this recess and just have a little kip if yeah. you want. So he does. He puts his head down on his desk, falls asleep pretty much straight away. And then Tate comes in to the room yeah. who's the bully kid and the canker man follows him in and then annie is also annie is the little girl who's been friendly with cody she starts sees it in the doorway yeah and it bends over backwards at her. yeah it, it, it does it like bends over backwards and does like a spider, spider walk, walk type thing towards her and then it takes tate yeah picks him up lifts him straight to the back of the class and kind of envelops him yeah takes him in and then the scene cuts away. Well, uh, Cody wakes up, yeah. Cody wakes up because Annie screams. She wakes Cody up and then everything disappears. But also Tate has also disappeared. Yeah. I thought that was a really good scene. It was really, it was probably the creepiest scene in the film. 
were one of the creepiest scenes in the film. I enjoyed that scene. And then we cut to the end of the school day. Yeah. And Cody's getting collected by Jess. And there's the police cruisers outside. Yeah, there's police outside the school. Uh, Because a kid ran away. Yeah, Cody's really keen to get home. He's like, get me in the car. I need to get home. Let's get out of here. Uh, Because a kid ran away. That's what he he explains to whoever picked him up. I think it was Jesse. Yeah. (laughs) That night when he goes to bed, Cody has stolen all of the coffee. Because Jesse goes to have a coffee to keep herself awake. And he's literally taken all of it. He's just drinking cold coffee. He's just drinking coffee. cold brew coffee out of the filter as yeah. well, straight into cold water, just to keep himself away, awake. So they're both trying to stay awake. But uh, Cody hears a noise under his bed. And so he goes to investigate. He's a brave kid, gets his torch out, goes to see what's under his bed. There's nothing there. And he gets back up onto his bed and zombie Tate is behind him on yeah. the bed. And he's got no eyes left. And he screams in his face. And it's a jump scene. It's a proper jump scare. Um, there's not there are a few jump scenes in this film there's not as many but there are that's one of a few that are in there i think so jess meanwhile is downstairs uh, yeah. and sean appears yes uh, and then he opens his mouth and starts screaming i'm awake this can't be happening yeah because that's what cody's that's screaming, what Cody's screaming upstairs. upstairs because he's now being pulled under his bed by zombie tate yeah he doesn't understand he he doesn't understand why this is happening whilst he's awake this yeah. never happened before but then he kind of snaps himself out of it wakes himself up a little bit i guess That's because he was asleep before he was awake i thought he was just he was just it's that weird state in between yeah you know when you just you can feel yourself drifting yeah but you're not quite there yet I, do you ever get that weird thing where you're just drifting off and then you suddenly like jump yeah because you feel like you're falling it's, yeah it's that sort of thing yeah i think that's where he was at wasn't he yeah stuck in that kind of realm next day he doesn't want to go to school he tell you claims oh, to did be you Ill. notice as well sorry mm. i i'm not usually the one who notices details <laughs> but when mark and jesse go upstairs to comfort him yeah he's got like bloody scratch marks all up his shins i hadn't noticed but it, was, it was never mentioned or anything but it was it was he was harmed good notice yeah. i didn't notice that next day he doesn't want to go to school he claims to be ill um it's quite clear why he doesn't want to go to school you know, because he finds him feels like he's responsible for the disappearance of this kid. Yeah. Which he is, I guess. Um, Jesse goes to that. Jesse, we find out at this point, is a nurse. She's got a job. <laughs> she does something in a hospital. Yeah, she's, she's in scrubs. She's in scrubs in a hospital. We've It's never referenced. It's mentioned twice. It's never referenced of what she does or why she it, does it. Yeah, but it's never been... Oh, it's never mentioned. No, it's not. We've never seen or heard that either of these people have jobs. No. We just cut to her in a hospital. Yeah. And again, it was a bit clunky. Yeah, but... It's not. It's unimportant, but it's an easy way for it to. Get Why does she work in a hospital? Because she, she needs some needs sleep some pills. pills. <laughs> she wants to make. Cody has no. I've not slept for two nights, and she that means she hasn't had a proper session with Sean for two nights. So she needs to make him sleep. So she tricks one of their doctor friends into prescribing some pediatric Advil. Yeah. So like sleeping tablets. Mark picks him up from school that day. Mark takes Cody home with him. When he gets there, there's some policemen there. No, he didn't go to school. Sorry, they'd been shopping. Yeah. See, Brendan brought some paint and a race car bed, yep. which was cool as fuck. It was cool. Always wanted a race car bed. Uh, but when they get home... Dude, from... what? get a race car bed. Why can't I have a... I can have a race car bed. Of course bed. you can. I don't, do they... I don't know if they make them big enough for me. <laughs> Quite a big guy. We can adopt one. We make one. Yeah. I'd love a race car bed. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget that I'm an adult and I can just have whatever yeah. I want now. You should get a boat bed. I should get a boat bed. <laughs> I've got one boat in this house already. I don't need another one. Anyway, when they get home from shopping, there's two policemen standing on the drive. Yeah, we don't see the conversation. We don't see the conversation, but we are told about the conversation later on. Um, they there's a footage of them making the race car bed up, and it looks cool. Um, and then later on, Mark and Jesse are talking in the kitchen. They're talking about Tate, who has gone, who is the school kid that's gone missing. Jesse and um, Cody doesn't want them to talk about it, so they're trying to have a conversation about what the police have been asking because yeah. it turns out. Cody was potentially the last person to see him. So he employs distraction and tactic. The, yeah, so the police are potentially talking about kidnap. So Cody just runs over, starts talking to them at full pelt. And he says, how did Sean die? Yeah. And that and cuts them both them off them straight away. Because at this point, they had never told him that. They don't tell him. They do tell him, but they don't tell him exactly what yeah. happened. They just tell him that he drowned. Um, then they start painting his room orange. Yeah. So he's going to have an orange bedroom with a race car bed. Yeah. Cool. It's a cool kid. What more Why can not? a boy want? Exactly. Um, Jesse was they're painting quite late at night yes so the time was a bit the off the time here. was all off because she was downstairs making the milk and cookies and then they make him sleep in the bedroom yeah, he's going to smell of, of paint. wet paint fumes no yeah. wonder this guy's tripping balls when he falls <laughs> asleep I think some time had passed because the wall had been finished painted by the time he went to bed Jesse brings in some cake which he may or may not have drugged 
the milk. She drugged the milk. She did drug the milk. But at this point, it may or yeah. may not have. But she did do it. Just before... Just before... Just, um, Mark's about... Fucking names are messing me up tonight. Just before Cody's about to drop off to sleep, that's when Sean decides to tell him it's a good idea to Mark. tell him that... I'm going to start that again. Just... <laughs> Fucking hell. Just as Cody is about to drop off to sleep, Mark is sitting on the bed and he feels like that's the best time to tell him that Sean drowned. He's like, I've got a bedtime story for yeah. you. I was like, I've written here. See that, that might be a mistake. See that very bath down the hallway? <laughs> that kid died in there. <laughs> Just as he's about to go to sleep. This kid who has weird dreams. Downstairs later that night, Sean appears again in front of... He's dirty. Jesse. He's all me- He's all grubby. Yeah. And messed up. And then he spits dirty water and moths all over Jesse. Yeah. Um, and then the canker man appears. Uh, Cody won't wake up. Yep. Mark's, he's drugged up. Yes. So they're all, they're all in Cody's bedroom. Mark's trying to wake him up, but he can't wake him up. He yeah. won't wake up. And Jesse says, no, he won't. You won't wake him. This is all the while where the door's being battered down by this By the creature. canker man. So the canker man gets into the room. So this is uh, all in the room. So Mark can't get him, can't wake Cody up. So he's like, well, I need to fight this creature, whatever yeah. the fuck it is. So he starts trying to fight it and develop, eventually the Kanker Man kind of envelops him into it himself. Does. So he kind of, he's like, he's almost like he's made out of rubber. Unbelievably, mm. yeah. this only occurs to me now, for the second time in this season of Bottom of the Stream, we see Thomas Jane's face sort of oozing oh, yeah. out of a otherworldly being oh yeah how strange we we have weird coincidences on this show yeah all the time because it happens in afterlife it does when he's in like that flesh monster, monster. and yeah. this time he's inside this canker man gets enveloped into the canker man and tries to get pulled out yeah, that's so weird that's do you think probably... he's only ever done that twice yeah, in his career definitely <laughs> and that's happened now twice in a month on this show <laughs> strange in all the commotion jesse also gets knocked out she gets thrown up against the wall and knocked unconscious. Oh, the canker man absolutely slaps her silly. He does, yeah. He lits her right upside the head. Yeah. Um, and the next thing we can, the next thing we see is Jesse slowly opening her eyes, and Cody's on the phone. Yeah. And he's called the police, and he's like, "She won't wake up. She, oh, she's waking up. She's waking up." And then the police turn up, and the police are straight on it. They're they're asking, "Where's your husband?" Yeah. And where was he today when the school kid went missing? Yeah. And why was your kid drugged? Yeah. So all these questions are being asked at the same time. Jesse hasn't got a clue what's going on because she she knows she drugged the kid, but she doesn't know anything about. Here's the social worker. Yeah. They're she taking Cody away. And they take Cody away. Um. <laughs> quite clearly, the right decision, maybe. <laughs> they don't know at this point that it's the kid's fault. Yeah. That this is happening. Of course it is. Within within what is presented to them yeah, at that time, def- turning up at the house. One of his core schoolmates has gone missing. Yeah. Mark is now also missing. Yes. And Cody's been drugged. Yeah. And Jesse's been beat up. Yeah. The kid's got to be taken away. Yeah. That's the right decision. Next morning, she goes to the adoption lady. She meets up with her. Um, she says, I need to speak to Cody. Um, I need to speak to him about his dreams. And that there's makes... A, there's a flash of... There's a reaction, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, and the... The lady's like, she says to the lady, you've heard this before, you know something. Yeah. Jess is suddenly like, yeah. whip smart. <laughs> yeah. She becomes she a detective. So the rest far. of this film now, she becomes a detective. Yeah. Um, but the adoption lady's like, here's some pamphlets on abuse, because your husband's obviously been abusing yeah. you. Talk um, to these people. I never want to see you again. Yeah. That's what she says. As she turns away to get the pamphlets, though, Jess has swiped Cody's file. Yeah, she steals which his file. Just conveniently left on top of the desk. <laughs> In a big blue file that said Child Protection Services yeah. on the top. Cody, whatever his surname was. Yeah. Um, in the file, she pulls over on the way home, and in the file, there's loads of missing person reports. Yeah, it seems weird. Yeah, I, feel, I suppose they would be in there. Well, I guess. It's all to do with his case. Yeah, it? it is, yeah. So she finds. A few people that are missing and one person who's in a psych ward. Yeah. He's been committed for whatever has happened. Uh, we've met him before. We have. It's the man from the beginning of the beginning of the film. It is. Um, the man with the shot gun, with the gun at the beginning of the film. She goes to visit him. Um, he tells his story. His story is basically that his wife vanished. He doesn't really know where she went. But I mean, you kind of get a flashback scene, don't you, of her waking. He wakes up in bed and his yeah. wife's been enveloped by the canker man. Correct. Um, which he obviously blamed Cody for. And that's when he went into his room with a gun. Um, Jesse tells him the next couple that took Cody in have also both vanished um, and now my husband's also vanished something's not right what is going on uh, and this guy says to her you've got to do what I couldn't do yep. you need to 
kill this kid. Yeah, that, I thought this guy was really good actually. Yeah, he was. He said he says that little boy's dreams come true, um, and he says it's an amazing and beautiful gift. But then so do his nightmares, and they can be deadly. Yeah. Um, and then she and he says to her, "You need to do what I couldn't do. The only way to stop this is to kill the kid, kill Cody." She doesn't want to do that. She obviously doesn't want to do that. I thought um, at this point, because when when there was the the flashback going on yeah. to this guy. I've actually, I actually wrote in my notes. Oh, it's very Tim Burton esque music. Yes. I then found out Danny Elfman did the score. Oh, did he really? (laughs) Okay, that makes sense. (laughs) There's a really nice scene in the flashback as well. It's only briefly mentioned, but the the guy says he tried to dream my wife back. Yeah. But he was a he was really young at this stage, and he had no memory of what she looked like. Yeah, he said he couldn't even remember her right. The little yeah shit shit back. (laughs) And you see this man hugging like a mannequin version of his wife. And it's like, yeah, that's how a kid would imagine, yeah. would remember that. Cody is in a home. He's He's been taken to some sort of children's home, I guess. Um, and the doctors are all talking about him because, again, he hasn't slept for another two nights now. Um, and that's against company policy. He needs to go to sleep. The social worker says, oh, I might stay with him tonight. Yeah. Because he's not slept for two days. Yeah. And they're, they're going to drug him, so she's yeah. going to kind of... Jesse, meanwhile, looks up his birth mum. Yeah. Um... Very she, easily tra- cracks this case. I've she does. To say. Yeah. I feel like there's some scenes on the cutting room floor, maybe around this kind of investigation. Um, she uses the hospital because she works. She's a nurse. Yeah. She uses the hospital to track down his birth mum's records, and then somehow manages to claim all of her possessions. Yeah. Li- literally, is twice she goes to work. Yeah. Wants to get this drugs uh, prescription and wants to get this uh, Cody's mum's personal yeah. effects. So she claims Cody's mum's personal effects, basically. Meanwhile, we see them drugging Cody to make him go to sleep again in the children's home. Ch- Jesse manages to track him down. Again, we've got no explanation of how she tracked oh, him no, down. Oh, no, she got, from within the file, she got she the info where, he's where, they, where he'd been sent. Okay. And she lets herself in, and there's no body there. No. There's no guards. There's it's no a big reception. children's home. It's a massive, home. yeah, mansion of a place. Yeah. But when she gets in, there was a really nice thing, because she goes to step foot on the stairs, and suddenly loads of butterflies take off from the yeah. stairs. That was really cool, I thought. It was a nice little visual, uh, visual. Somebody's in a chrysalis. We find out later on that that is the social worker. Yes. She goes into a bathroom. She gets distracted. Sean's calling her, I think. Yeah, she gets distracted by a bath, yeah. basically. That so happens she, all the time in this movie. It does, yeah. She heads towards this Anytime bath. Anytime she sees a bath, she's like a butterfly to a candle. That's moth, isn't <laughs> Moth it? to a flame. Yeah, that's the one. So she goes. To, she heads towards this bath. Suddenly, Tate is behind her. He screams in her face. Yeah. And then Sean is in the bath and he's struggling and it's it's like he's drowning. And she walks away from it. She's She does. She's got leaves a, it behind. She's got a high priority now. Cody's yeah. what she's after. Um she finds him. Oh, she thinks oh, she's found him. Yeah. Um she hasn't found him. He's now he's sitting on the sofa watching the video footage of what's just happened in the bathroom. Yeah. And then dead Jesse walks in behind him puts her fingers into his head and starts wrenching his head all around the place. I thought she put his eyes out. She, yeah, she kind of... But she went in through the side of his head as yeah. well. She was like... Wren, she was like, Almost like she was trying to pull his head off. Um, and then Dead Mark shows up. Well, and then some, Cody turns into Sean. Sean, yeah. And then Dead Mark turns up. And I was like, oh, this is actually, you know, not... Not I've had a dream like this, but you, it was... I. It reminded me of when you are dreaming and stuff turns into other stuff. Yeah. Like, you like, oh, this is... I'm me in this dream, and then suddenly, oh no, I'm not. I'm someone. Do yeah. you know how they leap around like that? It, it really felt like a dream. Yeah, it did. It, 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 it did. It, it was really it well did it done. really well. It really was. Um, Dead Mark shows up. He's just got some moths crawling around on his face. Um, and there are butterflies absolutely everywhere. Also, there's a lot of kids just cocooned up against. Yeah, there's the wall. all sorts of people cocooned up against yeah. the walls. There's butterflies everywhere. She finds. She locates the room that Cody's in. She does. She's she at finds the end Cody. of a corridor. Yeah. As it always is in these movies. <laughs> so she heads towards him, um, but the canker man steps in her way and stops Throws her. her out. Throws her across the... Throws her back down the hallway, basically. Yeah. Um, and then it's got this really creepy run. Yeah, it, it runs at her. It just runs at her. But during... It's well janky. Yeah, it's really... It's a really great monster. Yeah. I know you said it earlier, but it really is. Um, during her finding of her mom's, the mum's possessions earlier on, she found a little butterfly toy. It's like yeah, it's like I thought it was like hand, hand sewn, hand sewn, yeah, blue butterfly. So she hand she holds that in front of the canker man as it's running towards her, and it makes us makes it stop. Yes, it literally stops in its tracks, 
and they're kind of face to face and jesse hugs it yeah hugs the canker man and it slowly starts to crumble and shrink and it crumbles and shrinks down till it's cody yes it is and then it just vanishes out of thin air as if it never existed in the first place um she picks up a sleeping cody and she walks away um she says as she's walking away from the room where Cody she gives asleep, him, the, him the butterfly he's she, asleep but he's asleep but she gives him the butterfly, holding the butterfly and she whispers in her ear in his ear let them go and then suddenly all the people in the chrysalises start to break free yeah Jesse the adoption lady is on the stairs because she's just broken out of a yeah. chrysalis she's, she's a all good key, but she says wait yeah and Jesse says no I'm taking him home yeah and she the, she kind of nods the, the adoption lady's like yeah that's I'll fair. do the paperwork yeah <laughs> When she gets home, she tells him the story of his mother. Basically, his mother got sick. Um, she shows him the files and she says, what does that word there say? And he says, canker. Yeah. And it doesn't say canker. It says cancer. So he has misread the word. Um, she explains, look, your, your mother had your mother got very sick not long after you were born. She started to look very different very fast. She went downhill very quickly. Um and she said you would have been taken into the room one last time to see her. And we get a flashback at this point. Yeah. And Mike Flanagan appears. The oh, does he? Mike Flanagan, it plays the doctor who, okay. carry, who takes Cody into the room. Um, little director cameo there for you. And he sees his mum for the one last time. And she has a, the look of the canker man. She's, she's withered. She's withered. She's, she's bold. She's, bold. She's, she's, yeah. like she's dying of cancer, basically. Um, and she would have said one last thing to you, she says. And that would have been, I am always with you, which is what the canker man used to say to her, to him. All of this, all of these memories together for a young child, you manifested the canker man from your mum dying of cancer. I think you've done a really good job of explaining that. Thank you. Why? Because I thought it was clumsy. I, re- I really liked it. I, I, I didn't think it quite pulled it off. I and that's interesting. I, I Why? Don't, I really don't want to sound like I'm railing on her. <laughs> I don't know. Kate Bosworth was good enough. I have issues with the cast of the film do as much as you do. I think that scene, and it was kind of the way I was kind of with it. Are you saying that I've just done that better than she did? Because your you. explanation <laughs> was has made me want to watch that. Okay, and I've seen it. Thank you. Well, yeah, I'm quite proud of myself. <laughs> and and I think it's a good story. Yeah, and it's a good bringing together of what we've seen before in the movie. Yeah. But I don't think Bosworth delivers it that well. I was kind of fine with it until she says something like, oh, I guess they would have took you in to see her one last time. And I think she's told you that. And I was just like, oh, it's not <laughs> quite, it's nearly there, but it's not. It, yeah. I, it took me out of it. She, she was completely guessing what had probably well, happened. If she'd but... have read from the journal. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Something like tomorrow. Yeah, because you had him. Tomorrow, tomorrow I'm seeing my son for the last time. To- for what might be the last time. To- I think yeah. that would have hit home better with me. Okay. I I think that's a fair criticism. I really so, so it's probably a bit of bit of directing. It's just not quite the right choice. It, I I just thought it was clumsy. Okay. I, I, I think, think it lost some of its emotional impact for me. I I really like that scene. I thought I thought it worked. I think the idea is great. Yeah, but you're right. I I'll get to it at the end. But I do have a bit of an issue with the casting of this film. She basically says, "Look, you made all of this real in your head, and your gift exacerbated that. Any other kid, it wouldn't have been any yeah. different. But your gift, you have this uh, incredible ability to manifest your dreams, and that's all these things as a combination has become made you who you are. Basically, I ju- I just think like I, I'm not trying to be flippant, but it was a bit too much like the villain monologue in or the detective i'm just to, it was going a lot to of, announce to you everything that's happened and it, why you did it yeah but it needed it you just you but needed i think you could have done it better you could have done it better i think that's a fair i think that's fair in fact i'll get to it at the end but i think i've seen it done better before she then apologizes to cody for using him um she's like i i should never have done that i should never have used your gift to bring sean back yeah it's not what I was trying to do. She apologizes. And she puts him to bed. They get into bed together. She puts him to bed. She's like, and he says, will you tell me a bedtime story? And basically she tells him the story of what's just happened, but with a happy ending of all the people coming back to life. Um, Tate's came, Tate woke up the next morning with his family. Yeah. Um, Daddy got to go and be with Sean, which is the only thing he wanted in the whole world. And she says, maybe one day we'll be able to bring these people. These people didn't come back to life. The, Mark doesn't come back to life at the end of this film. 
Um, but she says you have an amazing gift and who knows what can happen as it grows. What did that mean? I think she means that eventually you're a young kid now. Your gift's going to get bigger and better and you might be able to maybe bring people back as you get older and keep them around. She doesn't know that. She doesn't know that. She's just like, she's just assuming that as he, as he gets older, his dream's going to mature with him, I guess. And then he calls her mum. He says, thanks for bringing me home, mum. Yeah. And then a butterfly appears in the room and the film ends. Cool. What did you think? I quite like the movie. I've got, yeah. I've got big issues with these with the with both the char- both Mark and Jesse. I think the I really liked this movie. I got past the fact that I didn't like Kate Bosworth or Thomas Jane in it. I thought they were both pretty bad. I don't think they got, got the chops it. to carry this. I don't think they have. I think you can cast this much better. But I I can I also think and this this is it is a criticism but it isn't a criticism. I'd be interested to see what the man himself thought. Hmm. Yeah, that's fair. If Flanagan makes this now, this is a lot slicker of a movie. Flanagan has the ability now though to cast whoever he wants in a film. Back then, even no, but even it. even if these guys are in it, I I think, <laughs> Do you think this he, is this is slicker. So you're putting some blame on him. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. I, this, I, if I'd have watched this movie, not knowing, if I'd have watched this movie earlier in his career, yeah. Say if this came out as his second movie, yeah. I think I'm watching this movie and I'm saying, I enjoyed that. And there's loads here to intrigue me to see what this guy does next because it looks great. I think it is a good story. Yeah. But I don't think it quite hits the land the, the landing, but I want to see what this guy does next. But now, you, but you now at that point where you have seen what he's done next, yeah. and pretty much everything he's done since has been. And you can amazing. tell this is your second movie. Yeah, I think that's fair. I, I I think it's down to the casting more than the directing. I I think it's really well directed film. I think it looks beautiful. I think the it does creature look design and everything like yeah. that really works. Brilliant. But I, I think it's the performances that let it down rather yeah. than the dialogue. I think that's what my hesitation is. It's, it, I'm, not quite, I'm not quite sure if it's the performances or it's the direction of the actors. And I, there's no way we know that. No, there's no, there's no way of knowing I, that. We, we know Kate Bosworth isn't a good actress. We've I, seen the island. <laughs> I also think that I bought Mark's chemistry with Cody a lot more than I did Jess's. They had a lot more scenes of just having fun and bonding with each other. Yeah. She quite quickly realised that she could use him and so that's done. Yes, and the... then she goes from that to oh I love this kid, I've got a she... and we didn't see much There wasn't the progression of love. Of the I progression, guess. yeah. Yeah. We, and maybe it's that that didn't quite sit well with okay. me. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a fair criticism as well, to be honest. Um but it's difficult to know where to level that criticism at. I because think... there could be some scenes that just for and the, we know that this film had a difficult birth. <laughs> so yeah. those scenes could be there. Absolutely. Somewhere on the cutting room floor. So I'm, I, that's why I'm a bit hesitant to go in really two-footed on it. <laughs> um, but but I, I know I have been critical, but I did enjoy this movie. I think overall it's a great film. It's, it's a good film. It's a good film. It's, it's a good... <laughs> I'm probably a little bit more up on it because... I in my eyes, Mike Flanagan could do no wrong. I've I've read a rumor this week that he's even working. He's got the idea to do something with the Dark Tower now. Okay, so I'm like, well, yeah, that's like the most exciting oh, thing it, I've ever. Yeah, heard. brilliant. <laughs> give it, give it to him. Absolutely, hundred percent. If you're gonna give it to anybody, yeah, give it to him. Yeah, and let him do what he wants with it. I I think we'll both agree that this film is completely stolen by Jacob Tremblay's performance. He's just he's, like I said right at the start. Plays, he's, it's so natural as just a child. A actor. believable kid. If this film was filmed in 2013. Which, it, as you say, it was. He was six when he made this. Yeah, it was the end of twenty thirteen. But so yeah, six or seven. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, and then then he's going on to make films like Room and Wonder. I I don't think there's been a better run for a child actor ever. He's, he's the best the, thing between about those. Him, he's a hundred percent the best thing about yeah. this film. Hundred percent. And he's not flashy. No, he doesn't. He never has been. He doesn't try to be. He just a plays a kid. a kid. He's just yeah. a kid being a kid. Because mm. how many times we say, "Oh, that kid really, really doesn't feel like a drama spot. school performance, does it? It doesn't yeah. feel like he's been raised. It's not in a, a movie drama kid. It's, no. it's like it's just a kid. It's just a kid being a kid. And it's all the better for it. Yeah, agreed. I think, and there's a reason that Flanagan probably cast him in Doctor Sleep, and they've worked together since yeah. and previous. What's the best thing about it? It's his, I think it's his, his performance. performance. It's his performance and. Um, the, the, the design of the Kankaman and the design of the butterflies yeah. and the effects, basically. It's it's really good CGI. Yeah, it is. It's, um, it's, really, it's a beautiful film. It's a really beautiful it's looking shot. film. It's a nicely shot film. What would you change about it? I'm recasting it, same. I think. Uh, exactly the same. You, you, your best thing about it is your kid, or your worst thing about it is I your do, Well, I'm doing two things. I'm, re, I'm recasting the couple, and 
I'm I'm rewriting that ending. I'm not rewriting the ending. I'm rewriting the delivery. I think there's a better there's a there's a better means. For but her I, to I communicate that to him, you at recast the end. that. You probably would get better. You might do. You might get better. Anyway. You might do. Who? Anybody in mind? Um, Tony, I Tony Collette. <laughs> she, she plays. You can see her movie. in this movie. One hundred percent. That's what she does, though, isn't it? It's her bread and butter. Yeah. That she, you can, you all the way through, it. I was like, this would be better if Tony Collette was in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad shout. Tony Collette and John Krasinski. John Krasinski. <laughs> <laughs> really good in a quiet place. Yeah. You could get, I think you could get a good, um, yeah, it's Thomas Jane's just a bit non, isn't bland. he? He's a bit bland. You could, you could do like a, that wig as well. A, co- a comedy, a more of a, com- someone maybe who's a more comedic ac- actor. Having comedy a actors in hor- horror works. Yeah. As, as much as this isn't a horror film, the, the comedy actors in horror, the horror genre always works. Yeah, I think that's it. Even I think... even if you drop some, I know he's he's gone and done stuff like Ozark now, but someone like Jason Bateman playing a dad. Yeah, yeah, he's done horror in the past. Yeah, he did the what was the one he did with Cameron Diaz? That was good. The box, maybe. I don't think that was him. Was it not? No, in the box it was. That's not what I'm thinking of then. Not Jason Bateman. It was Cyclops from X Men. <laughs> James <laughs> Marsden. Was it? Is that him? What am I thinking of? Though? I don't know. I'm sure Bateman's done horror film before. We need to talk stream table then. I think we might differ slightly on it. I, I, so I think we are going to differ. Yeah. But for me, which I feel is rare for this season, I know exactly where it goes. Okay. Do you want to go straight in? I've got no sort of, oh, it's a bit between this and this. I, I've got a clear place. That is rare for you. I've got a clear landing place for this movie. Do I need to run through any of the stream table or... Are we in top 10? Bottom 10? There's 20 in there, so... We've, 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 we're have we've in the top 10. Okay, so should I run through the top 10 yeah. briefly then? So currently number 10 is The Perfection. Uh, number 9 is Containment. Number 8 is Arlo the Alligator Boy. Number 7 is Ares. Number 6 is Good Time. Number 5 is last week's movie Orbiter 9. Number four is Hello, My Name is Doris. Number three is What Happened to Monday. Number two is Under the Shadow. And currently at number one is Apostle. Go on. Am I starting? Yeah. This is... I haven't got a clue, so... This... <laughs> I don't even know where you're going to go. <laughs> I Yeah, I think, I think you're wondering what, what's going to happen. I am, yeah. This is the ninth best movie this season. <laughs> wow. Okay. We are quite a long way apart. I want to put it 20... No, I'm joking. <laughs> so, you, what, you're saying just above containment? Yeah. If I'm being honest with you, I was a lot higher than that. Okay. I think I was like fifth. It's not top five. Maybe fourth. No. It's not better than last week's movie. Surely. Not for me. It's somewhere, it's around there. It's, it's, it's around there for me. Good time for me though is, an, is a mess, is a mess in that. It is a mess. I would agree with you. No, it I mean, is a mess. it messes my stream oh, table it's a, up. Oh, it's because me. <laughs> for me, that shouldn't be anywhere near that. I'm I'm somewhere around there. I, the minute I'm between orbit and nine and good time, I think. Okay, so just just the five places above four places. Just above skirting you. the top five. Yeah, either just inside or outside. But I understand that I have quite quite a biased opinion on this because I have developed a love for Mike Flanagan over the last years, and I really love Jacob Tremblay as well. Yeah, and th- those two coming together and making this movie really work for me, and it's a genre that I really enjoy. Sure. And it just... I, I it liked just this movie. I know you did. I'm not saying you didn't. Yeah, good. <laughs> just, just, I'm just one <laughs> I'm of... just saying it really it really worked for me, obviously, a lot more than it did for you. Do you want to compromise somewhere? I absolutely will not go higher <laughs> than Good Time. So... Like, the, the absolute top... The absolute highest this could go is seventh. So, okay. For, for me. Personally, it's it's... Just under Harley, the alligator boy, obviously. <laughs> of course it is. This hasn't happened for ages. We have never, we haven't been this far apart in a very long time. <laughs> Normally we're green on a lot of stuff just lately. I would concede to put it below good time, but I think you might have to owe me one. You owe me one. So we'd level again. <laughs> Do you want to level us up? I mean, all I'm saying is, if it goes there, you're giving up potentially <laughs> one place and I'm giving up two. Yeah, but... You're wrong and I'm right. <laughs> I think I'm being more than fair. Below I good would, time. That's my last offer. I'm prepared to compromise. <laughs> I said that's the absolute highest I would go. I think that's more than a compromise. I would be happy to compromise 
and I will give it one further place. And it can go eighth, just above Arlo the Alligator Boy. That's too low. <laughs> Sorry, it just is. There's no way Ares is a better film than this. I had more fun watching Ares. There's no way that Ares is a better film than That's this. Whether you film. had more fun than this or not. I'm, I'm, to use your old <laughs> conundrum, if I had to watch one again... It would be Ares. I'm watching Ares over this. Not a chance. Personally. I'd watch this again today. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Let's put it above Ares <laughs> and call ourselves even. And be happy. How, how is that even? Happy. <laughs> because I don't want to owe you two with four films left in the season. But you would owe me two if we put it above Aries. I don't want to. But I'm already <laughs> I'm already giving you one extra place. This, I'm sure this is make, making for absolutely great entertainment. Yeah, I might cut some way. of it out. <laughs> Let's put it below Aries then. But I'm I I'm. You want to put like an asterisk? Yeah, <laughs> I do. Also, I don't agree with it. Well, I, you know, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm. I'm absolutely. I've let you. I'm not going to lie to you, Nick. I'm <laughs> devastated that Good Times higher than that in the stream table. <laughs> devastated. D- look, I think I it ex- makes a mockery of our stream table. <laughs> <laughs> no, this Good Times is a much better film than this nah, that's for me. <laughs> You've upset me. Okay, we we need to end the conversation. So let's put it below Aries, above our low the alligator boy. <laughs> Which it's is a eight, better film than... 8 out of 21. That's not bad. No, it's not. It's not bad. It's not good enough, but it's not bad. It goes there. Just below Aries, just above Arlo the Alligator Boy. 8th in the stream table. I think we've got a pretty good top 10. We've got a great top 10. There's some good films in that yeah. stream table this season. Definitely. And I think we've still got room for more. There's, what, four left? Yeah. We've still got one wild card to play. Exactly. So we'll see what Jordan can come up with. Talking of which, shall we pick next week's film? Let's do it. What would you like? Uh, I think I'll stick. I think I said action last week. We didn't get that, so I'll, 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 keep, with, I'll stick with that. Right, I'm going to press the button. Are you ready? I am. It has picked a film called the F uh, asterisk asterisk K it list. Okay. I think it's called the fuck it list. Fine. <laughs> Any ideas? No. I mean, I'm I'm feeling maybe a comedy. Sounds comedy-ish, doesn't it? It's like a pun on bucket list. Maybe it's the sequel to that uh, Morgan Freeman movie. <laughs> I can't find it on IMDb because there's can't type swear words in. Oh really? Okay, so the fuck it list is, you know, IMDb has loads of different genres that it lists for a film. Yeah. This one just says comedy. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, it's from 2020. It's a 15. Do you want to know this synopsis? Yeah. It says, after a prank blows up on a high school senior's life, he shares a list of certain things he wishes he'd done differently. Okay. It's 5.1 on IMDb. Oh. So again, we're around that five, six, uh, six area. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll check that out, shall we? Yeah. See what it is. A teen looks like a teen high school comedy. I've not done one of those for a while. Well, I don't think we've done one this season. Um, time freak, maybe that's probably as close as we've got. He was a proper scientist, yeah, but he was there were kids. <laughs> cool, cool. Okay, we'll do that then. And then, so go out and watch the fuck it list. And in the meantime, check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Letterbox. the same username for all three at BOTS underscore podcast. Uh, if you want to drop us an email, our email address is bottom of the stream at gmail.com. And if you want to visit our website, our website is bottomofthestream.com. On the website, you will find every episode we've ever recorded. All six season stream tables. Loads of other cool stuff. And you can even get some merch if you want to buy a bottom of the stream. Quill. Quill. <laughs> Where has that come from? I don't know. <laughs> After you've done all that, head over to Patreon, patreon.com slash bottom of the stream. On there, for a couple of quid every month, you will get early access to episodes. You'll get bonus episodes. Nick writes a newsletter every month that you will also get. And if you come in at the top level, you'll get a wild card, which means you can stop us using Robin the Randomizer and you can pick the film that we watched that particular week. And then we have a competition to see who gets the best one and then the best one gets a prize. After you've done all that, head into Discord. Our Discord chat channel address is in the show notes and it's where we have loads of cool fun we have loads of watch alongs there's always people talking about random stuff in there just come along and meet some cool people yeah come join the chat come join it it's the spice of life it is i'll put the discord link in the bottom of the show notes. not a saying but we could make it one <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, if you've got five minutes to spare please consider leaving us a review or a rating anywhere that you can review or rate podcasts because it really helps our algorithm and get us in front of more people's eyes and therefore in their ears. Maybe you could review us via Butterfly. <laughs> you could dream as a reviewer. Oh, that'd be cool. I bet you get some real wacky dreams. Yeah. Have you ever eaten any insects? I was just thinking about this. Not intentionally. No. I, I When I was traveling around Thailand... Singapore, Malaysia, etc. Yeah. I did partake a few times 
in street vendor because you you will get your hot dog your pretzel and you can go to the next cart and you can get your crickets oh. mealworms any good in a, in a your little paper bag um i remember having a bag of insects right. and they just tasted like twiglets oh okay there's lots of flavoring added to it yeah that. were they butterflies no. Why are we talking about this? I have no idea. <laughs> it just popped into my head. Is it the big? It is the Big Bang Theory where Howard says, "I ate a butterfly." Yeah, it just, it just really makes me laugh. Anyway, anyway, we went off. We went off on a tangent, an hour and fourteen minutes into this recording. Um, so yeah, do all of that. Leave us a review from a dream, and then go out and watch the Fuck It list. And we'll be back on Monday for the wave, and next Thursday to talk about it. Cheers. Bye. Bye.